All right, and we're back here to BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Drive safe, Dave here on board behind the news desk, along with Chris Wright, senior account executive over at Sam Sarah. How you doing, Chris? Good morning, or afternoon in my case. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think we're I think we're right at that point here at noon. I think half the country is in the morning and half are in the afternoon. So. Whatever you feels like shaking it down for you, Chris, you're always going to be right here on this show at BCB Live. I love it. Love it. Uh, all right. So tell us a little bit about um, what Sam Sarah is. Let's start off exactly what it is. Yeah, no, great question. Um, you know, for anybody who doesn't know who we are, we are a IoT business. So we're essentially uh, bringing data points in vehicles, fleet vehicles, and making it into tangible data. So we're taking points from diagnostics, we're taking artificial intelligence, and we're creating actionable coaching items via dash cams. Um, we're constantly evolving. So there's a lot of new features, there's a lot of new alerting pieces to what we do. So it's a constantly growing and evolving platform. Yeah, Chris, and, and, and as we know with the mandate that happened several years ago with the uh, ELD, that's pretty much where Sam Sarah kind of jumped in, right? With the ELD mandate, trying to build in onto that. And what, what you found out was the amount of data that came in was was usable in so many ways, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, you know, that was, um, it, it, from my from my perspective, that was a big jumping point, right? Sam Sarah is all over the ELD side. We work really heavily with large fleets, tractor trailer fleets. I personally am a little bit siloed. I specifically work on the public sector side, so I deal directly with government. So we don't see quite as much ELD, uh, but that that is a huge part of our business in you know working with compliance and making sure that all the data points that we have are as accurate as possible for those drivers. So absolutely, I mean that's that's right on point. Did you um, and when you're talking about in the in the uh, public sector, I, I'll tell you, we're all going to benefit from this data, right, Chris? I mean, in in so many ways. I mean, this data that you're talking about on driver performance, re, you know, cameras, um, hard brakes, um, all of this data that's starting to fl flow in. Not only can we help improve our business, but let me ask you a question government agencies and the uh, everybody outside wants this data as well right yeah there's you know this is a really good question and a good topic altogether right because when it comes specifically to data points and ai and cameras it can go one of two ways and i think that there's this kind of stigma that still sticks around sometimes in government and sometimes in in private fleets that it's a big brother tool, or it's a tool that isn't going to help the fleet, right? And with government, when we look into government specifically, this is a tool of exoneration for them. And they do want these data points for a couple of reasons. And I mean, we can go on about this all day, but there's, there's one key reason, and that key reason is transparency. So when you look at schools, you look at public works departments, you look at police departments, Everything in today's environment has revolved around transparency and the ability to see what's going on within the community, right? So governments now, uh, state, local, you know, education are coming in hot to grab these pieces of data because of that exact reason. They want to make sure that they, people in the community have oversight or at least some view of what's going on, you know, within those fleets. And, and when you do this, and here, here's the question, and, and I know that, that you're, you're talking about this, but if I have a fleet and I'm utilizing these data points and these safety, and, and I can improve my safety 100% without question by doing this, correct? You can, yeah, yeah so... so let me think about the question. So there's going into anything that has to do with either telematics or video safety, you're going to improve 
tremendously depending on what your use case is, right? So, and that's one thing at Sam Sarah. I'm very specific. I'm very. I take a um, a pretty strategic approach in how I talk to the end users, the government about this, and I really want to understand what metrics they're trying to improve. And how, how we're, we're going, going to offer, offer that improvement, that improvement right? right? So, so I, would I would say 99% of the time, the time something, something, depending on why they need the devices or why they need the video, there's, there's a 99% chance that it's going to improve something, something within their fleet. Their fleet. Absolutely. I, and, and, I, and I'm on board, Chris, because let me tell you, you're shedding light on what's going on all the time. I mean, in some way, shape, form, or fashion... It, that transparency that you're talking about, the idea that we're taking notice for the first time from the start to the finish, everything that's going on behind the driver, how can it not help safety when we're all focusing on it? For the really, for the first time in the history of logistics, all the, you know, while the driver's out there on the road, right? I mean, I, I know that you're talking to everybody and I know exoneration, everything, I, and to me, Right or wrong, you know, right? I mean, right or wrong, you know. And if you're exonerated, great. If you're not, you know the truth. You know where you're at. And, and I'm telling you right now, how can it not help you with your safety? It, <laughs> there's, I mean, there's virtually no way that it can't help you. I mean, there, you know, it's just... And you would be surprised, but you'd be floored at some of the conversations I have. I mean, there, there's always going to be adversity to innovation and changes. Uh, but to your point, I mean, just to, to talk about it in that form, that fashion, whether, and you have a great point there, whether it's you're right or you're wrong, it go, all goes back to the, the transparency of it, right? And we know what happened here. We've got a conclusion, whether you're right or whether you're wrong. And inevitably, even if there are times that a driver may be in the wrong, overall, that safety, that productivity is going to improve because of that, right? So it's, it's improving in a lot of ways. I mean, telematics and, and video solutions, it's a domino effect. You know, behaviors change, there's safer fleets, there's less accidents. It, it, it's, it's a whole domino effect. You end up saving money from lawsuits. I mean, so there's more than just looking at the fleet manager and saying, hey, well, don't you want to see when your maintenance is due? And don't you want to see, you know, when there's an accident? I mean, there's, there's so many pieces of this, and there's no one stakeholder in any business when it comes to this technology. Safety is the responsibility of everybody in the organization. Absolutely, and I agree. Uh, you're now you're starting to preach to the choir because I that's that's what we believe here at BCB, the safest station in the nation. Look, I, I'm just going to tell you, I I I I love ideas and concepts behind this because no matter what, no no matter how you view it, no matter how you look at it, you've got to understand that we have to know the truth about what's going on out there. It's no longer he said or she said. And you have the ability within these units to not only see what's transpiring out there, but you create coachable moments that make the little things. I mean, the nuances, the not the not and we're not just we're not talking about the the nuclear verdict crashes right now. Okay, we're talking about the daily habits that every driver out there on the road has in one way, shape, form, or fashion, you have an opportunity to help make that better every day, right? 100%. 100%. Absolutely. Did, I it, did. It, yeah, I mean, and it, my deal is, and when you go to people, and I, I do, and they start to get that, and I get it, resist, change is, is hard, right? Change is difficult. Um, do you just want to shake them sometimes and, and just <laughs> say, wake up! I, I, how do you... How could you not want to know what's going on? Because I'll tell you, Chris, and answer this. No longer is it okay to say, well, I don't want to know. That way I'm not responsible. Like, I, I mean, if I, as long as I don't know, I won't get in trouble because I didn't know. Because right. that, now I think what they're worried about, and you, and you tell me, they're worried about that they do know. Now they have to do something about it. Isn't that awesome? You're right. I mean, you're right on point. And like, and like I said earlier, I'm I'm very I'm tied to government. So my experience is solely with 
dealing in some red tape and processes and, and different elements of the sales cycle, as you will. Uh, there's, do I want to shake them? I mean, some, I don't want to go to prison, so I don't. But yeah, I mean, there, there are times where I'll sit in meetings and you know, we're uncovering all sorts of different pieces of the puzzle as to why insurance premiums went up or why, you know, there's been accidents. And, and, to go, and to go back to your point, when there is resistance, when there is pushback, it's, it's typically not because of, you know, the solution we have or the technology. Everybody, for the most part, acknowledges and understands that we have an innovative product, that it can help. I think a lot of it goes back to old habits, right? And what you said before is, well, what if something does happen? Do I want to be responsible for that? That's a lingering thought, and surely amongst a lot of different fleets, not just government, that sits around and wants to say, okay, well, I can exonerate myself just by not knowing, right? And where the education piece comes into this is for those one time out of, let's say, 10, that things are swept under the rug, it's going to come to light and it's going to cost you. And it's, it's simply not worth it. And it's building a gap between you and your community at that point, because these are all things that were preventable. This is looked at as a preventative you know, type of device, a, a something that can help save dollars, taxpayer dollars, can help save people from you know, accidents or call-ins about snow not being plowed, for example, because our devices go all the way down to the point where it'll track where snow is being you know, plowed and how much salt's being put down. So there's a lot of pieces to it. And yeah, I mean, you know, certainly there is pushback. It's a lot less now. People tend to be receptive now. So I, I look, I, I'm just going to say it to me, government is us. We are the government. I mean, any any true American needs to understand that no matter what you say about government and all that red tape, that's just us trying to be slower at doing the right thing. Um, I, I will tell you that I, I don't think, for, first of all, I don't think juries are okay anymore with, oh, I didn't know any better. I, I just don't think they're that stupid anymore. I, I think we all realize full well, you had every opportunity. So I look at it this way, and Chris, you had every opportunity to wear a seatbelt, right? I'm not telling you to wear one because I think you'll get in an accident, because I want you to get in an accident, because... But, I'm, but you need to wear one in case it happens. And to me, the same thing applies here with what we're talking about technology. We're talking about the same idea and the same principle. You do it because what might happen. You do it because what you can prevent and what you can benefit yourself on the data. Here it is. Let me ask you. And I, and I get it. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of data collection deals. Why is Samsara the best option out there on the road. Why is Sam Sarah the best? You're the guy. Tell me why Sam Sarah is the best. Well, I mean, first and foremost, and the most important reason is um, you got me. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Anybody at Sam Sarah listening? Ching, what's going up? For, I got you, Chris. All governments listening, you know. No, so in, in all seriousness, you know, there, there's a couple. There's a couple factors about Sam Sarah that really set us apart. And for anybody who knows me, I'm very vocal about my work. I'm very vocal about my career. I've got a podcast, you know, so it, there's something to be said when I, when I compliment a company, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll put it to you that way. And one thing I absolutely love about this organization is we take such a unique approach to the customer story and how we manage and solve the problem, right? And I'll give you an example. A couple, I wanna say two months ago, I had somebody I was working with, we ended up you know, getting roughly you know, 350 vehicles suited with devices and, and part of my process with them was going out with them personally and installing 300 devices, right? And the only reason I wanted to do that was I wanted to make sure that they were gonna have a good experience. And I wanted to make sure it was gonna work right. And I wanted to make sure their settings were correct, right? There's, to the best of my knowledge, 
there's not anybody that I've worked with, you know, from a competitive standpoint who has offered to go out, spend time, take time out of their day and pocket as a salesperson to approach that. So I think the customer success part of it is huge here. Sam Sarah is very diligent about hiring people who are very proactive, who are very you know, self-starters, engaged with their customers. And, you know, on the technical side, we have a lot of very innovative technology. We're constantly evolving. We have real-time GPS, which is, you know, there's maybe one or two people out on the market that have that. We actually listen to the customer's feedback. So there's an option in our dashboard to say, hey, I've got this issue, and I would really like this alert. And our development team at, you know, goes in, looks at that, listens to it, and then we put out you know beta for people to test things and try new things. So. It sounds cliche, but it's real that we truly listen to what the fleets want and we're trying to grow and evolve with them. So, you know, Sanjan, our CEO, is very innovative. He's a successful entrepreneur. He's somebody who has a lot of experience with, you know, making sure that products are solving problems for the end user. And I'm just, I'm truly grateful to be a part of it. I mean, it's just, it's, this is the best company I've ever worked for. Hands down. Oh, fantastic. I, I tell you, I, I'm excited about the idea and the principle that, that we're going, we're talking about necessary items and technology needed out there for private fleets, public fleets, whatever the fleets are that have an opportunity to create safer environments for all to share on the roadways. Chris, 45,000 people died last year on the roadway. Okay. Um, sad. Yeah. yeah. 45,000 died the year before that. We're on track this year to have the same number. I, I, at some point, you, me, everyone needs to realize these are not acceptable. And Agreed. whatever whatever we can do, whatever in whatever facet we can do, we got to find better ways in order to make that number not just go down, but go away. Right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with a zero. Right out there on the nation's highways, I I don't know many people, Chris, that that get involved in safety and get involved in this and realize that there isn't any of us that are older than twenty that don't have somebody they know, somebody they don't that they a loved one or somebody that they know a friend that hasn't been killed in an automobile accident in their lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. And and one question, I mean, this this boils down to one question in my mind, right? And in, in in some cases, it's when do certain people, whether it be fleet managers or whoever the obstacle might be in a certain situation when it comes to implementing technology for safety, right. when, do we, when do we let ego step over somebody's life, right? So what's more important, the ego of knowing that, hey, I, I could potentially get away with something or somebody's life? Because that to me is what it breaks down to. And I'm obviously passionate. I work with schools. I've right. had schools that, you know, we've I've put trial devices in and they've caught people doing 90 miles an hour with students on the on the bus. I mean, that to me, I absolutely love what I do because right. there's no telling if that guy that was eventually fired, of course, would have done it again and killed all those, you know, kids on the bus. Oh, there's no that, doubt. There's no that is something that I am passionate about. And, you know, the, the driver, this particular driver was somebody who pushed back. Well, I don't want cameras in here. I don't want this, right? And, you know, it doesn't matter what you want. This is the safety of the, for you and for the students and for everybody involved with that school, right? So I, it's like anything. And you had a really good point here. It's technology. It's evolving. Same thing with the seatbelt. People hated the seatbelt. They couldn't stand it, right? Every I don't even think about a seatbelt anymore. Right? No. I've got a kid. I've got a family. I don't want to get in a car accident and, and lose my life because I, you know, didn't want to wear a seatbelt. So I look at this innovation, this technology, and all the companies out there doing it. Respect all of them that are trying to help change a norm in society when it comes to safety because people's lives are important and you know what people who are driving trucks and delivering freight and cargo those are important jobs man like those people those people do a really critical they're a huge part of our economy and they're in need right now right i mean we have to provide layers of safety and you know things that are going to get them 
feeling safe, like they're going to get home to their families, right? I mean, so I, I think over time, this, this is going to change. I mean, we're in an early stage of it. I, I agree, Chris. And let me just tell you, I, I with my personal experience with Sam Sarah and, and some of its innovations, I, I, I think the coaching um, opportunities that are available um, with this tool are, are remarkable um, because let's just take, for example, and, I, and I'm just going to throw it out there. You have a, you have a, number one, nobody thinks they're a bad driver. Okay. Right. No, they, okay. They just, nobody does. And, and, and second, you have an opportunity to work and better the trade craft of a group of people out there involved in our lives every single day with our families on the roadway. So you have a chance to coach and create better drivers every single day, right? Because this tool offers a coaching method, right? Offers a coaching system that helps people to be better at what they do. Not, not criticize them, not go out there and say, oh, you suck. But really the idea is to go out there. Now we do want the guys doing 90 with children on the bus right. to not be out behind the wheel. But I'm talking about something so simple and I, and I get it, rolling a stop sign. Now, we've all done it. We're all guilty of it. There's not any of us that haven't done it before. But really, we should be stopping at all of them, right? I mean, that's what it's for. They're designed that way. It's the safest move. It's the best move. And we have an opportunity to share in those and say, look, you rolled six today. I, You know, I get it. You didn't hurt anybody, <laughs> but your chances were there, right? right. Your, your chances. And I think, speak to the coaching because, I mean, you really haven't gone because I think that's huge into what we have an opportunity with these type of systems. Yeah, yeah no, no it, it, you're, you're absolutely, absolutely right. right. And, and uh, the, the, the beauty about the video, video solution is it's, it's, it's artificial, artificial intelligence. intelligence. So, so there's, there's parameters, parameters that are set up and put into place to coach on very specific needs for that fleet. And, and, you know, to give you an example, example let's say EMS. EMS. You've got, got EMS, EMS and for some time, time in, in many places still, they were required to wear a mask while they drive. It was a, it was a safety precaution from a health perspective. And there were features that were piloted to capture whether or not the mask was on, right? But that's a parameter that the EMS folks have the ability to put into place. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a really, really good, good artificial, artificial intelligence in general is a highly, highly, highly effective technology for video, for, for, for really anything, anything writing, writing, video. There's a lot of technologies being built, you know, with artificial intelligence now. But when it comes to safety, it's bringing immediate attention, to your point, on the things that are really important to that fleet. So a rolling stop through a stop, you know, through a, a, a stop sign, for example, or, you know, let's say a harsh break event. Which, which could have, have result, resulted resulted in an accident, accident right? right? So, so there's, all there's all these different, different layers, layers, and within and our dashboard, dashboard, you can go through and train the AI, AI to, to, you know, have, have a higher, higher sensitivity, sensitivity, a lower sensitivity. sensitivity. You, you can, can build, build it out to match your exact your needs and expectations, and, and it, it does. does. You know, as a whole, I can't give precise numbers, but as a whole, we generally see a relatively large increase in productivity, but also a decrease in, let's say, accidents. And just some people I work with specifically, accidents or, you know, from people rolling through stop signs, for example. Uh, but yes, the coaching aspect is tremendous. And, and you can have, you know, safety managers, risk involved with stuff like that, right? I mean, operations departments, and we're built out for large fleets. So you can tag things out you know, break up users for, for different safety and coaching mechanisms. Uh, it's absolutely, I, I'm glad you brought that up because it is, it's a huge part of what we do and it's, it's, it's instrumental in, in our success as we try to create safer fleets, 100%. Hey, Chris, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, look, I appreciate, you know, what, what, what your company's doing and, and the, the product that they're providing and the innovation that's continuing to go on. I look forward to, to seeing what else y'all will be coming out, what, what else, and when, we, when you do, make sure you bring on here, and uh, we, we don't want to see the video of the guy doing uh, 90 miles an hour with school. That is not the one we want to look at, but, you know, Chris, I, I'll tell you what, I, I do appreciate what you're doing. I do like the passion that you have for your job, um, because safety is, is, a, is a mission, you know, I mean, it is a primary function of, of what, what we need to do to make a difference 
and what's going on in our culture out there on the highways. Um, Absolutely. Hey, Chris, how does anybody reach out to you if they need to reach you, talk to you? If you got any schools out there that want to go, you know what? I kind of like that, Chris. What's the best way to reach out to you? <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll say just, you know, on the passion side, it's important, you know, as a dad and somebody who has lost people due to safety, lack of safety, you know, measures. This is something I'm passionate about. And I would encourage anybody listening family, you know, if you have kids, whatever the situation might be to just take some time and invest mentally in how you can help improve that or how you can encourage within your organization to create safer measures for people because it could potentially save somebody's life. And that's the reality of it. Um, you know, as far as contact, yeah, I'm, you know, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, you know, my email is just Christopher.Wright at samsara.com. You can reach out to me with any questions. I love having conversations with people, sharing, you know, what we do. And certainly I can point them in the right direction. You know, if it's, if it's, even if it's a private fleet, I can point them to somebody at the, at the company. Uh, all the socials that I have are all, you know, kind of streamlined. It's all rights mind. So I can be found on, you know, anything just by typing that in on Google or going to LinkedIn or something. But um, yeah, happy to connect with anybody who has questions. Um, you know, I'm very, I take a very educational approach. You know, I am technically a salesperson, but I don't fall into this stigma of, you know, I'm not gonna have a conversation with you unless you're gonna buy something. This is so important to me. I will have those those conversations. And, and if I have to recommend something different, right? I mean, at the end of the day, what matters to me is that, that the students are safe, the people in the community understand what's going on. And, and that's what it's about, man. Thanks, Chris, man, I, I do appreciate it. Hey, before you get out of here, um, I do always ask that our guests state their name, who they're with, and that you're watching BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Can you do that for me? Yes, sir. Uh, Chris Wright with Sam Sarah, and you are watching BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Wow to go. Hey, thanks, Chris, man. Hey, have a good holiday. Happy Thank New you. Year to you, and we'll holler at you sometime next year to get some more information from you. How's that? Yes, sir. I've been very productive. Looking forward to staying in touch. Thank you hey, guys thanks. for what you're doing. All right. Thanks, Chris.